Hi, I'm Colin. I'm the Director of Technology at Comco. I'm Anders. I'm Technical Sales at Comco. Colin, how did Comco get started in the aerospace industry or doing what we do in the aerospace industry? Uh, Anders, our start came from the 70s. Uh, we had several aerospace companies who were in the local area here in Burbank, and they had a new requirement that was coming down the line. They had to have burr-free finishes on all of their machine parts with no edge break. And a challenge for that really comes into some of the valves and manifold assemblies where the burrs are going to be located deep inside of the part, so very difficult to access, very difficult to know if you've removed them. Uh, Comcoast technology allows us to get the abrasive process right down into the part where the burr is located, and then we can target that region specifically without having to blast the entire part. You know, and I'm seeing it in, on this particular part, uh, and I do have a lot of customers that ask this question, we have different, different size bores, different holes, different cross hole sizes. Uh, how does Comco attack that? Well, if we have a bore that's half inch diameter or larger, we can simply use one of our right angle nozzles, reach down inside of the part, target the burr, and blast mm -hmm. it off that way. Right. Nowadays, though, many of the bores are much smaller than that as everything shrinks and becomes more complicated. We started, we've come out with a line of uh, ID blasting nozzles. They can be as small as 65 thousandths in OD. Those can reach down inside of some of the tighter geometry parts and attack the burrows that way. There's a lot of different types of materials that Comco Com goes up against. How does our method kind of stand out? Well, for microblasting, the first thing we want to do is identify the type of burr that we're working with. If it's a feather burr or a rollover burr, they're going to tend to have a very brittle roof, and we can attack that with a soft abrasive. That's the feather. Those would be, yeah, yeah feather yeah. burrs. They're going to, we're going to use something like sodium bicarbonate. That's going to hit the, strike the burr with enough energy to cause that brittle region to almost detonate, stripping the burr off. If we, if we have something that's more aggressive, uh, we may have to move into a glass bead or a plastic media. Plastic media works on a, on a different principle because what it's going to do is it's going to kind of, it's a gummy. So it's going to wrap itself around the burr and rip it off that way. You know, and I also have a lot of customers that, that ask about surface finishes. Mm -hmm. uh, inside these bores, sometimes it becomes very critical in the aerospace industry. And they're wondering, is it affected anything around the area or what, what happens then? So that's a great question. Depending on the type of abrasive we're using, we can go from having no impact at all. Mm -hmm. uh, sodium bicarbonate is great for that because A, it's very soft and B, it's water soluble. So the soft nature of it means that we can take off that burr and not have any impact on the surface finish. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, for the most aggressive burrs, though, we will use a, a cutting abrasive like aluminum oxide. That will leave a matte finish. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that may or may not be acceptable for an application. Nozzle size and shape is really going to be driven by the type of part that we're working with. Right. The most cost-effective nozzle is going to be a standard right-angle nozzle. So for larger bores, it's an easy way to go right. um, that are very accessible. But as you, as you mentioned, we do have a range of nozzles that have much smaller diameters and longer lengths. Many times those can even be custom-made. Uh, we had an a aerospace application trying to get down inside of... Uh, landing gear that was 14 inches long and blast a, a cross drilled hole down at the bottom of it. And there was so for those applications, we can make a nozzle like this at any, any range of lengths up to about 14 inches long to reach down inside of the parts targeting only the burr region. Mm -hmm. um, and on this nozzle, so what we have is we have a long uh, main diameter on here and then we have side holes that come off of it. And so what those allow us to do is just reach down inside of the burr 
locate where that intersection is and blast only that area. So we're not blasting the entire part. We're not wasting a lot of abrasive or energy or time. We're targeting specifically the damaged region of the board. So Colin, what's the next step for someone with a deburring application? Well, Anders, if you have a customer who's working on a process and struggling with deburring, I'd recommend the website. There's a lot of information there. Or they can send their part into us and we can process it in our applications lab. And they can see how microblasting works on their specific part.